There was just a knock on the door, which I think means something has arrived. All right, it's not the thing I was expecting, but who has a candle addiction? I have a candle addiction. There's Teddy, who just took meds and is very cross with me. Now PETA is guarding my address like a good YouTube cat. All right, no, he lives here now. This is his box. All right, we're gonna unbox this later. Well, I guess we're trying vlogging again. <laughs> it is Friday, November 6th, and we're gonna try this thing. Mostly because I agreed to do a product review, and I think that product will be best served by a vlog format. Like, I actually want to vlog trying this thing out. I'm going to keep you in slight suspense, although it's probably going to be in the title and the thumbnail, but whatever. Uh, it was supposed to arrive today, and I checked. It's actually delayed, and now it's going to arrive on Monday instead. So in lieu of that, I'm going to show you a bunch of candles and some nice fall winter vibes and maybe if i'm lucky my good friend laney will help me turn this into the vlog i hope it to be if you've watched in the past you know i kind of pulled back from vlogs because it just they weren't living up to my own high expectations for myself all right i've officially moved venues to the couch though the cat remains open the box oh he's lying down oh there's a cat all right some of this is a gift for someone, so I'm not gonna show everything in this box. So they had a sale on soaps and stuff, so I got myself this one. Energy, orange and ginger. Gentle foaming hand soap. Can never have too much hand soap. Okay, wow, I did not expect this, so I got the same scent in lotion. It is like a glass bottle. It's kind of luxe. I'm excited. And I got this for free with some of my Bath and Body Works points because I keep buying candles. Speaking of. All right, another venue change so that we can get these open. I got two this time. I exercised amazing restraint. Testing some new scents and I'll probably order more to be honest. Ta-da! So I got spiced gingerbread and... Christmas cider to start on my Christmas candle. So immediately I think this is gonna be my germ because I also have been really loving this one from the fall collection. The sweet bakery scents are kind of my thing, at least like when it's nighttime and I'm writing, I want this though. I've also been burning this a ton recently. It's very, very light and kind of nature-y. This one, Christmas Cider, is also a bit like that. You can see here the scent is mulled cinnamon, crushed clove, creamy nutmeg, simmering cider. Meanwhile, this one is vanilla icing, cinnamon spice, fresh ground nutmeg. To that end, I'm actually about to have lunch, so I will do that vlogger thing where I show you footage. And I have been eating a little differently for the last couple of months because Lady actually inspired me. She lost a bunch of weight and changed her eating habits, and I was like, duh, I'm a smart person. I'm stuck at home. I have nothing better to do than make some of the shifts and changes to my lifestyle and my kind of food and eating habits uh, that I've wanted to in the past, but it's always like, day job complicates things. Well, now I can't leave my house. So I eat a salad every day for lunch now, and it's kind of amazing. I also bought a blender and I make smoothies now. Mostly I'm much, much better about eating protein and fewer carbs. Carbs have always been a problem, but really for me, I was always terrible about eating a proper amount of protein, which you need in your life. Especially because I haven't been a heavy meat eater, and now I'm trying a lot harder to eat more protein. It's not always for meats, but meats are some of the easiest sources. So I've been eating more meat, essentially, and a lot more vegetables. I also bought an Instapot that I still haven't used, because mm, I'm going to learn how to use that eventually. <laughs> So you might see many artful inserts of me making food, because what else do you do in a vlog? So the base of these salads is tomatoes. Because I've just been jonesing really, really hard for delicious, fresh tomatoes. And you'll see all the other things that I add. I always First I have them, then I quarter them.
Next is cucumber. When I get them from the grocery store, I peel them, but when I get these nice organic ones from Trader Joe's, I don't. I cut them in thirds down the middle, then chop. Next, I really like onion for flavor. Next is avocado. <laughs> nice healthy fat to add and I do purposely buy the small ones from Trader Joe's because if they're any bigger than this, they count for more of a serving. said I do not rigidly follow servings that's something that can really trigger some of my disordered eating issues I'm just being generally mindful that is okay for me when I start measuring and counting it's not good for me mindfulness picking up a couple of new habits and taking all the extra time I now have at home for thoughtful meal prep. Last but certainly not least, I don't always do mozzarella, but today I want mozzarella and avocado. It's a little something extra, not too much. And this is what it looks like pre-dressing. I love it, how colorful it is. Here's my dressing. I mixed this up very recently. Sometime later in the vlog when I do a new batch, I will show you my recipe. It's my mom's recipe, which is actually my half-sister's mother's recipe that my dad also gave to my mom, family, with some tweaks that I, adjustments I've done. So shake this up. I'm not not generous with this, to be honest. Ta-da! So this doesn't have any protein. Normally I would eat this with a little mini quiche side or I would have some turkey or something like that, but I'm going lighter on protein for this meal because I'm planning a heavier protein dinner. So now I have my lunch and while we're here, let's talk a little bit about where I am with writing. So it is NaNoWriMo and I am not currently doing NaNoWriMo. Though I do plan to do it a little later in the month, you'll see with the thing that I get in the mail why. In the meanwhile, I have been in past pages hell. Super fun. So past pages are the final proofread of your book. They lay it out the way that it's going to be physically printed. And they either send you a physical copy, I had that for my first book, Brightly Burning, or they send you a PDF copy. And actually, I discovered that at Penguin Random House, I'm gonna have two rounds of past pages. This is past page round one, and as I've been going through it, I see why. They take the design very, very seriously. And before it was sent to me, a proofreader went through it, the copy editor went through it again, I guess they brought them in to, co to proofread as well, and my editor went through it, and they already made a ton of notes. So I'm checking all of their notes, making sure I agree with things, addressing questions they have, but also reading through the manuscript line by line. This is my last real chance to make substantive changes. And to that end, I'm finding, just as with copy edits, that they're taking way longer than I thought they would. They are more detail-oriented than I expected. I'm just mentally kind of wrapping my brain around it. It's very draining. Plus, we're in the middle of this darn election, so it's been quite a time. I was given two weeks to do the past pages, and the day before the deadline, when the deadline was election day, I knew it just wasn't going to happen. I was making progress, but not enough progress. So I asked for an extension, and it's funny, I only asked for a couple days, and then yesterday, Thursday, my editor was like, actually, you want to take the weekend? Because why not? We're all a little bit broken. So I've been completely laser focused on past pages, like mentally in terms of books and creativity, which is why I haven't been writing. I haven't even thought about my whip, which is actually currently with my publisher for consideration, so eep. And that is the thing I plan on working on for part of Nano, doing a partial Nano. So there will be actual 
writing in this. And now that I've seen everyone's author two secrets, I know I can use B-roll of fake typing. Yeah. So if you want to know how I often work, here's the cat on my lap desk and the computer's over there. So this is like my setup. These are my past pages. <laughs> and so I just sit and I work on them. The right now, I'm actually editing a video because I filmed today. But so much of my life, like if I actually have to write, is reaching over the cat to get to the keyboard. And it is most precarious with this arm. <laughs> it ends up hurting my arm a lot. All right, I got the thing in the mail. Can kind of see it. Let's let's get it out of this packaging. Ta-da! Oh gosh, it's got such a thin profile. I'm excited. The Free Write Traveler, the laptop for distraction-free writing. So this is what it looks like inside. So we're gonna pull this out of the protective sleeve. Wow, it is smaller and sleeker than I expected. Look at this. All right, let's. And this is what it looks like. So it's basically, it's a nice, it's not a nice tactile keyboard. I already like, oh, I like the feel of that. And you have a little screen. And once I actually get this set up, we'll figure out exactly how it works. Uh, but the idea is that you can take this places, it's not connected to Wi-Fi, you can't surf the internet with it, and you just type, 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 all you have is the words, and then you wirelessly connect it to your computer and it'll upload all the writing that you did. So I am going to test this out, uh, ideally. <laughs> So I guess I should back up. The company reached out to me. I saw they were coming out with the Traveler, which is lighter, more compact, and where I see myself really using this is when I leave my house in another universe to go to cafes and stuff because I do write on my desktop, which is right here. And I've actually been using a very old laptop that is super slow. I mean, there's a reason I upgraded to a desktop. So this really represents a great opportunity for me because I was thinking, well, I kind of need something to do writing with when I go to cafes, but it's not worth buying a brand new laptop only to use every couple of weeks to write books. So this is really attractive to me. And so I'm gonna test it out and see what I think. So I got this thing turned on and first to set up the Wi-Fi network, I hit new and then look, there's my network. Yes, it's called Juris Fiction. If you get that reference, hit me up in the comments. I'm gonna press one to choose it. And then y'all are not gonna know what my password is. So hold on. So Postbox is, you get it. I automatically had a account set up with Postbox and it's where they sync your files. And then within Postbox, you can further sync. So I'm gonna then sync it to my Google, but you can do Dropbox and Evernote. So you're all set up for syncing. You have successfully connected to Wi-Fi. Press any folder button to get back to writing. So here we see there's folder A, B, C. These are the Wi-Fi settings. This is the basic keyboard. Um, I like the size, like I like the way my fingers feel on it already. I was a little worried that this would be too small. I hate really tiny computers where I don't feel comfortable with the keyboard. Oh, I love how nice and wide the space bar is. Oh, that's that's from a candle. <laughs> the space bar is, that feels really good on my thumb. These buttons, you press them at the same time to start a new document, but then you can pick your folder. So I already set up folder A on Postbox to auto sync to Google Drive because, and look, I typed some words, hello, this is a test, because I figure I'll use that folder for my current draft. Uh, the one thing I'm definitely figuring out is you're not going to be loading an existing document onto here and reading where you left off. That's definitely something I tend to do, but this almost kind of suits the discovery writer in me because it'll just mean I'll have to read beforehand and kind of know where I am in my draft and just leap right into it. This is pretty cool. So it automatically created a post box folder in my Google Drive. There's folder A. 
I had it save it as a Word document, a docx file, so you can click on it. Those are the words that I typed. I typed this after I turned the camera off. So it already synced, it synced immediately. So it is Thursday the 12th and I have run out of salad dressing and so I can make a new batch, show you how I make it. And this time I bought a new mini tripod so that I can get better at filming these vlog angles. So let's start with the basic ingredients. This does call for vegetable oil in my mom's recipe, but I am, you'll see I'm playing around with it. And malt vinegar, though again, I ended up playing around with it. This was actually hard to find in California. I had to order it from Amazon, which hurt my soul. Growing up on the East Coast, it was everywhere. Then I also use that wonderful basic bitch salad dressing ingredient, balsamic vinegar. It's what really makes it work uh, and why I'm doing the modification. And then I've been experimenting with putting a tiny bit of olive oil in to possibly experiment with phasing out the vegetable oil or I might end up swapping the vegetable oil for a healthier oil. But I was craving kind of the thing that I loved from home, so I, I went with that. I used a tablespoon to do measuring. Then it's seasoned with garlic salt, white pepper, and red pepper, and a tiny bit of sugar. I'm actually going to be doubling this. The standard one is three tablespoons of the vegetable oil, one tablespoon of the malt, and then the seasonings, but I double it up so that it lasts longer, and then I, I've really been kind of liberally playing the seasonings, so I just do the oil on the spoon. So I'm doing six tablespoons of this oil, doing just like one of the olive oil, this is because when I made it the way that it is in the actual recipe that my mom made, it didn't taste the same. So I've just been playing with it to get it the way I like it. So then one, since I doubled it, we're doing two tablespoons of the malt vinegar. And a little extra, because a little extra doesn't hurt. You can always make this to taste. I like it mostly tangy with a little bit of sweet. Then one balsamic, one tablespoon of balsamic is usually enough. The seasonings. So now I can just stir a little. You don't have to. You make this in a bowl. It actually makes it easier to whisk, but I use my little OXO container. So my mom always did these by what she called shakes. There are technical measurements, but she would do 14 shakes of garlic salt, so I'm doubling that. And then I honestly am pretty liberal, so I do a little extra sometimes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Then it's gonna be 10 shakes of the white pepper, so doubling that again. Seven shakes of the red pepper, so again, doubling it. Then I think it's one teaspoon of sugar. So I always do the one. Then beyond the one, I try to be like careful. I don't like to do too much. So I'm gonna mix it up this way first with a spoon. Then I'll, I'll like put a little on the spoon and I'll taste it. I live alone. I'm the only one using this so I can taste the spoon. It's sweet enough, but I like tangy. So this is where I'm a little liberal. You have to trust yourself a little. So I want a little bit more malt in there, a little bit more balsamic, a little bit more white pepper. Then I love the garlic salt. You can't go wrong with the garlic salt. Shake. Shake, 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 shake. So that's it. So satisfying. Just shake. And this is my salad dressing. This lasts me for four or five days. Now I'm actually gonna make my salad. Hi, it's me, the person who is bad at vlogging. It's November 18th already and you're like, what have you been doing? I will insert some shots of what I have been doing.
I've been reading. I played a little bit of Sims, but not that much though. I'm proud. I watched all of season four of The Crown and you're like, none of this is writing. And I'm like, I know, but I've actually been jonesing to write. It really hit me last night of like, enough time has passed. You've turned in your past pages. You want to test out the free write traveler. I really do. And it's kind of like, just, just work on something. But first, uh, one thing I did that is absolutely horrific and borderline unforgivable is I received more candles in the mail from Bath & Body Works and I unboxed them without turning the video camera on. It was late at night, the lighting was terrible, I might have been in my PJs. So I'm gonna show them to you now. The first one I got is Winter. This is when the single wick candles were on sale for $6.50. This is so I can test some new ones before I get more three wicks. I love this scent. Then I got blueberry maple pancakes. This one's almost nauseatingly sweet, but much like pumpkin uh, pecan, it's still kind of a mood. I got a thousand wishes, which is kind of like champagne supposed to be in this. It's like a little musky. Haven't burned this one yet though. And last but certainly not least is lemon and mint leaf. I knew I would love this because I love the limoncello candle. This one might actually be the home run. I just haven't burnt it yet because I've been feeling very winter mood. So I've been burning that winter candle. In fact, I'm gonna light it right now. So in an attempt to make it up to you, I am going to unbox this. Yeah, I might have gone a bit overboard on Ulta. They had a sale, don't they always have a sale? Um, so Lainey's been talking about retail therapy and darn if that ain't a mood, like can't go anywhere, might as well buy a million candles and apparently beauty product. It started with a 30% off a product I already knew I wanted to buy and was waiting for a sales opportunity on and it kind of snowballed from there into, oh, but they have a free gift available kind of situation. So let's start with the actual reason I went for this. Lancome Primer. Generally, I don't like primer with my makeup. However, I got a sample of this the last time I bought Lancome foundation, which is my favorite foundation. And I actually like the way that it works with the foundation it's made for. So I was like, if this goes on sale and it was 30% off, which it's Lancome. So I still think it was like $30 cause okay. Lancome's got me though. Like unfortunately they're really quality. <laughs> So I keep spending $47 on foundation because it I love it. I'm wearing it right now I needed a new Morphe sponge face sponge every couple months I just abuse them and they get holes in them or if the cat gets a hold of them They luckily haven't on my Morphe sponges lately But for some reason always turns the Sephora ones into a toy and the Sephora ones are four dollars more expensive Which is why I switched to Morphe. So I needed a new Morphe sponge so so one of the gift with purchases was if you spent $25 on makeup, you got a Kylie lip kit. I don't have feelings about Kylie makeup. It's definitely never something I was gonna like fall all over myself for. And I've heard, I know some people love these lip kits, but it's just not something I ever needed. But hey, I thought I'd get it. I was like, hey, it's a nude color that I can certainly try wearing. Comes with a lip liner. Always need a good nude lip liner, so. Speaking of lip liner, Becca lip liners were half off. I'm like, I'll buy a Becca lip liner for $9. So that's what I did. I just bought one that I thought would go well with my favorite lipstick, which I'm wearing now and in almost every other video I've made for the last year. And that is Dance Floor Princess from Charlotte Tilbury Hot Lips 2. I freaking love this lipstick. I bought a spritz bottle for my hair. Uh, I find basically on like day two, day three hair, it like doesn't do well when I sleep on it. So I zhuzh it with water. And the one I've been using is a cheapo from Amazon and it's really hard to open. So I wanted to get a proper one. Look, that actually opens, unlike my cheap thing from Amazon. Uh, so yeah, it's just a, it's a Tangle Teaser water spritzer. Okay, which brings us to one of the most ridiculous beauty purchases I've ever made. I guess this is what happens when it's late at night and there's a sale and you can't leave your house. I don't know, I bought this. 
6.7 fluid ounces of Clinique Moisture Surge because my skin's been really dry. This isn't even one of my Holy Grail products, but I'm sure it's not bad. I think I've used their testers before, but I'm like, why not buy a giant ass thing of moisturizer? It was on sale, which means this cost $66 instead of 90. I've lost my mind maybe, but I'll report back. And the Clinique came with a gift with purchase. See, this, I got like a little mascara sample, a little bag that has travel size foaming sonic facial soap and their dramatically different moisturizing lotion. I haven't used these products in years. I used to use Clinique when I was younger, but who doesn't need travel size things if we ever get to travel again? So yeah, I might have a shopping problem. It's fine. We're we're fine. Why hello, yes it is December 14th. It's been a while since you've seen me. What have I been doing? A lot and yet all of the same, which is why I didn't film anything. I can show you one thing I have worked on while I've been away. Look at this lovely paint by numbers. This has been the ultimate de-stressing tool. I've really enjoyed it. I highly recommend it. I got it from Michaels for $9.99 on Black Friday sale. No regrets, that was over a week of good work. I'm still not done with it. Really great for de-stressing. Highly recommend. Because I have been doing a lot, getting a lot of AMM done. Also have continued to stress shop. And so we're gonna close out the vlog with one last candle haul. It was candle day at Bath and Body Works the other week and I didn't get many candles I wanted because whoa was it crazy. It was like chaos out there but I got a few. So we're gonna close this vlog which has been more candles than actual writing or reading with candles. Ta-da! It's very very big. We're, we're gonna see how this goes. It's a box within a box. So within this giant box are a bunch of smaller <laughs> candle boxes. Candle number one is watermelon lemonade. I haven't tried it, but I saw it come up and I like both of these things. Okay, I like that. Next is sparkling woods. Lavender and fur needle essential oils with notes of bergamot and iced lemon. I got this one because the review said it smelled most strongly of lemon, which is a scent that I really like. A ton of the candles I wanted were sold out by the time I shopped the sale in PT time. So I definitely threw in a couple that hadn't necessarily been on my list, but I decided to take a risk. This is another one of my Hail Mary's black tie. Thought I would try it. Oh, I got this one because it said it had dark tonka bean in it, which is a scent I like. It's also got aromatic sage and rich sandalwood. Oh. Hmm. It's like musky and fresh at the same time. I'll be very interested to see how this one burns. This one's super straightforward. I just got another leaves because I know I like leaves. I've already burned through an entire one of these and I love this scent. Oh. That's the stuff. This is another no-brainer surefire getting a candle I already knew I liked and really the only reason I shopped the sale. Winter. 
I love this candle. I only got the single wick of this to try out, which was earlier in the vlog, and I freaking love it. It's probably my new favorite scent. I also bought a wallflower, so I guess I did I did skip a uh, Bath and Body Works haul, and you're like, do you have a problem? Do we need to stage an intervention? Uh, maybe. Um, I've told myself I have to stop now, because now this is six three-wick candles, and then I have a lot more. It's so bad that I had to buy storage for my candles. I Last but certainly not least is Winter Candy Apple, uh, which I bought on the recommendation of Lainey. Candied apples, crisp pears, and oranges. This is one that isn't very strong in here, but I bet it burns nicely. Honestly, a lot of these, like you can smell them coming out of here, but you gotta burn them to really see what you think. And I'll be honest, from earlier in the video, I didn't end up loving the other Christmas scents I got, the gingerbread and the snickerdoodle. Like they're okay, but there's something like cloying about them that I haven't ended up loving. I'm gonna burn them anyway eventually because I have two giant ass candles, but that's why I went more for the fresh winter scents when I was trying other ones because I discovered I liked the sweetness in the fall scents. I really liked uh, pumpkin pecan waffles, but the sweetness in the Christmas scents so far hasn't worked for me. So I shied away from those and went more for the fresh kind of tree and pine type scents. So I'm gonna cut it off there because you basically have 30 minutes of me unboxing candles and making and eating salad with some writing related content. <laughs> I will keep going, keep trying because I will be seriously drafting in the new year. I can share more about that later, but I'm gonna be writing a book. So let's look forward to that future vlog content. I'm glad I tried again after being shamed. Like she didn't shame me, Lainey didn't shame me. I shamed myself uh, because I think Lainey is so good at vlogging, which is why I tried it again. So give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Let me know down below in the comments. I mean, let's talk about candles. Uh, what else are we gonna talk about in this video? And yeah, happy holiday season, everyone. I hope everyone's okay. We need 2020 to end, please. On a good note, we hope. Can nothing else go wrong? That is that is my request. Um, and yeah, let's look forward to 2021. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, I post new videos two to three times a week. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Happy writing. <laughs>